Hello and welcome to a new Luba video. Today we're talking about the most frequently asked questions. There are quite a few topics that are always in demand and at present I have condensed them in this video and made an effort to offer responses to these inquiries to the best of my abilities. So if you don't want to miss anything, stay tuned, subscribe to my channel and now have fun here with the most frequently asked questions about the Luba 2. Here we go. Radio signals and their function first and foremost, I would like to address the radio signals that Luba has. Firstly, Wi-Fi, which is the WLAN signal, is used to perform updates and control the Luba remotely. With the Luba 2, it is still possible to use a SIM card. The Bluetooth signal is needed, for example, to mow manually or have the capability to adjust specific settings exclusively on site. This implies that certain settings must be in close proximity to the Luba and cannot be performed remotely. Then a question is always asked, is it necessary for the Luba to have a direct line of sight to the RTK antenna? No, it is not required. In reality, the Luba has its own radio signal or transmitter that receives signals from satellites, enabling it to operate effectively. And here you can see it. And then we also have the satellite station, the RTK station, which additionally receives signals from satellites and has a radio connection to the Luba island located in the vicinity. And this radio connection travels over incredibly long distances through trees, over residential houses, so even small buildings are absolutely no problem or hindrance whatsoever. So these are these radio signals. The Luba itself does not need line of sight to the RTK antenna. This is always extremely important and when issues arise, it is typically not the RTK antenna, but the Luba that then receives an insufficient number of satellites. I have already made a video about the RTK or updating the Luba. Feel free to watch that again. I will also provide the link for you once more. With the RTK antenna, you need to add it prior to using it in your station or in your app. However, this only applies to the Luba. For the Luba 1, you don't need to add the RTK antenna, but you also can't update it through this app. Here are the steps on how to do it, and make sure to take a very close look at it in the application on your device. Just attach the RTK antenna to another device, choose the RTK antenna, and you will be able to view the RTK antenna for updating in your application, where you can adjust all the configurations. The update is consistently displayed on the Luba itself. Kindly make sure to regularly update the firmware version and then observe if the Luba continues to operate as intended and without any issues. A small tip for the update on the Luba, regardless of the model you currently have, whether it is Luba 1 or Luba 2, after the update, please remember to pull out the key once. There are naturally two significant differences between the Luba 1 and the Luba 2. When you switch off the key in Luba 1, it is truly completely powerless and dead. However, in Luba 2, it still functions. So, during the interruption of the main circuit, the Luba 2 device continues to maintain reception and stay connected to your application. And I will show you immediately how you can recognize that. As previously mentioned, extract the key once and then restart the process accordingly as instructed. That is how it is with the security, ensuring that the update truly works and is also properly rebooted. Some individuals simply let the Luba restart on its own, but I observed that certain updates caused errors to occur and these errors were subsequently resolved by performing a restart. Also, it's advisable to disconnect the RTK antennas from power after an update, reboot them again, and then the source of errors should significantly decrease. Here you can clearly see that the Luba also functions even when the key is not inserted into it. Only the Luba 2, as mentioned, will then be displayed here. I will also provide some troubleshooting tips. 
If the device is locked, the app will also display the sequence in which you should press things. You can either send the Luba back to the station once or have it mow the lawn one more time. Bluetooth should of course be available. Here now for manual mowing which I am doing or also for control. When you restart the Luba, you need to move it manually a bit on your lawn so that the GPS signal is correctly recognized and the positioning is accurate. Only when you reach that stage you have the ability to enable it to run automatically once more. However, the application also shows errors. It was not always like this, but now there are many error messages being displayed on the app. I have come across an issue at this moment that has arisen for me. I have also restarted it at this time and simply wanted to mow manually for a little while and then send it back to the garage, but that did not work for me and there was an error that took place in this location where I was initially also at a loss. What's going on? Why is it showing an error instead of driving into the garage? Can I control it manually? There was a problem with the mowing job that I had previously cancelled. I encountered an issue and needed assistance to resolve it. I had indeed paused it, but I had not turned it off, and now Luba had another mowing task to carry out and complete before moving on to other responsibilities. And I consistently encountered this error, and I stated, be cautious, maneuver into the garage, and the error continues to resurface. And at this point, you can now see clearly that I simply looked to determine where the error might be or where it could potentially be situated. And my assigned task was in an active state. It was not stopped. And I simply deactivated it here and then the looper ran back into its designated garage location. So simply observe that area to determine the location of certain settings. Even if it does not work after a restart, there are instances where a task may still be active in another location or process. If you are stuck and really having trouble with the Duba, send feedback. This is extremely significant. My motion desires to gather a substantial amount of data and the Luba possesses a so-called black box where errors are stored. When you transmit them utilizing this feedback function, the memory is read out and the Luba is assigned to your device by its unique serial number and it sends the errors to Memotion for analysis and further processing. You just need to answer a question about where the problem lies. You can simply enter it here at the top, then you can also add pictures or a video where the problem might be visible, such as not mowing the edge properly, getting stuck somewhere in front of the garage, or whatever. And then you send the whole thing off, and it will be evaluated. There was once a post on the English side, I had it translated, to see what Motion writes about why it is so important that you send feedback. Here I would like to address once again a weak GPS signal and D-Vision technology. And you can also observe this in your application. For instance here, it is evident that the signal of the robot is extremely weak. And at Luba 1, there was always the problem that it would stop. With Luba 2, we do not have that issue because it can continue driving for a distance of 50 meters using D-Vision technology and you have the ability to visually perceive that here in this screenshot, in this recording. That means I have a great number of trees here. The signal was not available at that specific moment or subsequently vanished. Subsequently, you will witness that the symbol denoting the signal undergoes a straightforward transition, effectively transforming into D-Vision. And now, it is reported that he can only walk with D-Vision. Furthermore, it also demonstrates the extent of the distance he is still capable of driving, so the Luba has the capability to navigate up to a distance of 50 meters without visibility in accordance with its operational parameters and specifications. A question that is asked very frequently is whether I can stop zones or create multiple zones from a large zone, or how can I effectively create zone transitions. And I would like to demonstrate that once again in this location, I had previously demonstrated it in a prior video and also in an older video from last year I had shown the step-by-step -step process of how to properly create a zone in a clear and concise manner. 
Naturally, a few things have already changed slightly through the app. There are currently more options for settings available than there were in the previous year with Luba 1. It is crucial that your zone overlaps slightly. This implies that if you have one zone and the adjacent one is right next to it, they should have a partial overlap so that the mowing process can smoothly transition from one zone to the next and cover the edge. This way you get clean passages, clean transitions, so let them overlap a little. And if you possess an extremely large zone, then you additionally have the choice to establish it in the identical manner. Commence with a partial zone, then on the second one, you drive into the previous zone, which is already included in the created zone, and thus, you simply proceed ahead and then from a sizable zone, you have created multiple small zones within the larger zone. So let them overlap a little bit. And then you see here, then I also do not have any issues with such a narrow passage that it cuts there correctly. Another very frequently asked question is how do I edit a zone? If now, for example, the edge is suboptimal when areas are no longer present or require modification in order to be changed or adjusted. Then you click on the edit button to edit the zone and now in the new view all areas are displayed and you can now click on the three dots or delete the zone or use the down arrow. Then a window opens and you can also see all your adjacent things in the zone like the no-go zone, the paths there, the route and you can edit them here now. You have the option to click on the three dots, delete the zone, or use the down arrow. A window will open, allowing you to view and edit all your adjacent things in the zone, such as the no-go zone, the paths, and the route. Restricted zones can only be deleted and need to be recreated. Similarly, the route can simply be deleted and recreated if your Luba no longer finds the way correctly, or if something has changed in the garden. I will now show you, using the example, how we can change the boundary of this zone and it's also relatively easy. To perform this action you need to click on the three dots located at the top of the screen. Afterward a menu will appear displaying the available options for this specific zone. In the specific area where or now in this particular case we want to modify the boundary so simply tap on it, adjust the boundary as needed, then drive to the desired boundary location where you want to make this change and then press the black arrow on start to confirm the modification. My suggestion in this case is to decrease the speed as much as you can. The more slowly you drive, the greater the accuracy in detecting the edge will be through the GPS signal. If you drive at an excessively high speed, inaccuracies can occur and then you might simply steer back to your limit just as easily and quickly as you initially exceeded it. In my particular circumstance, there have been certain modifications as a result of, I have no knowledge of, the positioning or conceivably even the most recent update. That can simply happen occasionally that something is not accurate, so I simply remapped everything at this location. That signifies I travel along this border and you see I also travel relatively precisely along the same borderline. So I do not leave a significant amount of space and I also take the curves relatively tightly, ensuring minimal room for error. However, you truly need to give it a try so that you can observe how the Luba then responds at the border in your garden in a corresponding manner. So at this location, please drive at a reduced speed and then ensure that you maintain a distance of approximately 4 to 5 centimeters between vehicles. That's sufficient in most cases, so in my case I have to say that the Luba really drives precisely to within 2-3 centimeters, and that works very very well with the worn out boundary. However, this actually depends heavily on the conditions of your, indeed the GPS signal in your garden, yes, the global positioning system signal in the outdoor area. That needs to be stated very clearly. However, even in this location, small details such as this large stone here have proven to be quite effective. Oh, here now, there is a flower bed or something. I will drive over it a bit so that it cleans up the edge a bit. I also plan to redo the lawn edges in the near future. I am uncertain at this point about the method I will use to lay them, but you can always give it a try. Simply drive along this path once and then all you have to do is click on the save button and the new boundary will be shown in the application. And that's it. 
So you can also take a look at the preview once, then you can already have a look at it. And once you are satisfied, you can simply save the entire thing without any further ado or complications. The process of knife change and cleaning naturally depend heavily on the condition and specific needs of your garden. What is the dryness level of the grass when you mow? What is the size of your area? And do you have molehills or similar features? So, this naturally becomes much dirtier. The Luba 2 now also includes an hour meter, so you can simply say, OK guys, I will start changing the whole thing after approximately 50 operating hours have elapsed. Simply check underneath more frequently to determine if your knives are still sharp. They will always become stuck, that is simply the way it is due to the construction work. There's not much that can be changed about it. These knives that are currently installed here and the knife plates from Momotion are unfortunately designed in a way that the knives get significantly jammed. If you have any ideas, write them in the comments in case you use anything else with it. After cleaning, for instance, I utilize a dry lubricant in this location to enhance the release of the adhesion of the grass. When I utilize that spray, the grass adheres to the underbody with significantly reduced intensity, making it much less difficult to clean during the subsequent maintenance process. I consistently follow this routine every four to eight weeks, depending on the circumstances, without fail or deviation. And then I also completely modified the blades. Currently, I am in the process of testing new blade holders that come with 10 blades obtained from ZTTL print and there will be a separate video dedicated to demonstrating the effectiveness of these high performance blades. They possess a cutting height ranging from 20 to 65 millimeters and you just get a little further down and especially for those who want to have a golf course lawn who want a very dense lawn yes these high performance plates are for them as I mentioned, I am presently in the process of testing them and will continue to do so in a separate video. I firmly believe that in approximately four to five weeks from now, I will be ready to introduce these plates and share my experience with them in a dedicated video as well. I hope I was able to answer some of your questions. These are really frequently asked questions that I have included here. If you desire additional topics or seek further information, kindly express your thoughts in the comments section. I will also provide you with the link to my previous videos once more. Take a look at my channel. There are, in fact, videos on numerous topics from the previous year covering a wide range of subjects. Feel free to check it out if you want to buy a Luba. You can also do so through my referral link to support me in my work. I would, of course, be absolutely thrilled about it. And yes, if you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to my channel. Until next time here at Still Penter, ciao.